We're gonna skip part four, but if you wanted to push this image up into the Docker hub for other people to access, you can absolutely do that. We're not doing that right now. So at your own, you can go through part four, but we're gonna to go to part five. And this is actually a big one because sometimes we're messing with data. And as we saw in the to do app, we have data and we want to persist it. But if we were to stop the container and open it, the data that we had previously is going to be gone. So the way we can actually persist data is by simply adding a couple things. So we're going to go through the steps one more time, but we're going to run this command here. We're simply going to start a container that has Ubuntu running and it's going to contain a file called data.txt that will have a random number between one and 10,000. So let's go open up my terminal and we're going to run Docker through that. And as you can see, it created another container, has an image of Ubuntu. I already had it installed locally, but if you do not have the Ubuntu image, it will immediately detect that and download that from the Docker Hub. Once we have that going, we're going to copy and paste this, and this will simply check the file that is inside the container, which is data.txt, and it should spit out the name of the, or not, should not spit out the name, but it should spit out the number. And what we need to do is we need to remove the current container ID or the placeholder there with the actual container ID. And there we go, we have 848 that spit out to us, so we know that there is data inside. If they want us to start another container that has Ubuntu, so we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. And it'll list in every single folder that is currently in the root of that container. And then what we're going to do also is we're going to remove that first container. So again, we're gonna go docker rm slash f, and then the first container should be this one right here. So we went ahead and removed that. So the way to persist data in that container is going to be by creating a volume and it's pretty simple to do. So the first thing we're going to do is run this command right here that they give us. Essentially, we're going to be creating a volume called to do hyphen DB. So let me go ahead and open my terminal here. And what we're going to see in the volumes tab now is a to do hyphen DB. What we're going to have to do is remove the container that we created because it is running without a persistent volume because we created the volume after container creation. So we're going to have to create a fresh one. So again, let me grab the container ID of the getting started container and same thing, docker rm hyphen f and with the container ID and that should remove it for other purposes. Let me also just remove this as well. Cool. So we have a clean slate. Now we're simply going to copy this command, but there's a couple things here. So along with the run and run command, the DNP flags, as well as mounting this or not mounting this, but binding it to the port 3000. We're also mounting the volume here, which is going to be the flag here that we see or the option. And we're specifying the volume that we want to mount. So the type is going to be volume. The source of the volume is going to be the to do hyphen DB volume we just created. And the target is going to be where the actual data sits inside of the container. So that is the path that we're going to do. And then getting started, we're actually just specifying the image that we where we're using or the container. So let me go ahead and copy this command, paste it in. And now you can see that we have another container with getting started and it will be utilizing the to do DB volume that we've created. So now what we can do since it's running, we're going to go back here to the to do app. And as you can see, I have some data that was in there and I didn't add anything. You saw that it was empty and there's two tasks in here that I added previously about, I mean, yesterday and they persisted. So now we're able to tap into the volume and the data and anything that we do from here on out, let's just say, I, I don't know, go to the gym. We want to add that if we stop this container and then start it again and refresh this, we can see that the data is persisting now. So volume creation is going to be the way to persist databases, especially if you're testing stuff. This is a good way to do that within Docker. And it's easy to play around with servers and actual databases now that we have data that persists instead of having to reload and add more data over and over and over again. So there's a couple other things that we can see, but if you were to run Docker volume inspect on the volume itself, you can see a couple things of metadata here, but specifically we get to see the mount point, the name, the scope of it, and it's created time. So those are a cool couple things if you want to persist databases within Docker.